What was there before Arduino Uno? Arduino Uno is a complete little microcontroller card, or I would say a microcomputer. Inside that chip right there is RAM, dynamic RAM, electrically erasable EEPROM. There's everything inside there. But before Uno, what did this hobbyist have? Before this little creation right here. I'm going to show you. There was this. This is a complete microcontroller unit. But you had to build it. And I built this 30 years ago. Basically at that time, what was hot was the Commodore computer. And this essentially plugged into the Commodore's port. And this is basically a RAM drive. A solid state RAM disk is what this is. And at the time, it was like incredible speed. It had four times the memory of the computer itself. And only it has 256K. That's all that's in here. So a quarter of a make. Yeah. And at the time, that was the hot deal. Now, I haven't been inside this box in like 30 years. So you're going to see it as I open it up. And uh, I'm going to tell you all what's in here. Everything that's in here is to be just like as if we took this chip apart in the center here. It's like if we took that chip apart and I showed you the insides of it. That's what you're going to see right here. It's just like four screws right here. See, back then, the only thing there was was floppy drive, and they were incredibly slow. Take 40 seconds to load your program. If you could load your program in one second, that was a thrill with a Commodore computer. So let's look inside this box. Take the lid off. See how well it's weathered. Wow. Surprisingly well, I must add. So I wish I could mount this, let me mount this tripod better here. So what we have here is, this is the microprocessor right here. That's a 6504. I used to use 6502s, but they had the 6504 as a shorter model. You can save a little room. And this is the peripheral interface. This is the port. It has two 8-bit ports, so you can get to the two memory chips over here that hold the 256K worth of memory. Oh, here's your your uh, erasable EEPROM. Back then, it's not electrically; it was ultraviolet. You put in an ultraviolet lamp, and you erase it, and you can reprogram it again and again. And then here's two cave, just basic dynamic RAM that you can store variables to when you're running the the program or whatever. Now, this is set up, programmed already to be a hard drive, a smart uh, RAM drive, basically like a USB thumb drive. Um, and this is the battery right here. Get the dust on it, see? It keeps the, the memory alive. This is CMOS. The CMOS uses extremely, extremely very little current to stay alive, virtually none. So it can keep alive on the battery, sit and keep the logic states in the memory alive there. So here's the crystal oscillator and then just some uh, LSTTL chips just to uh, map the circuitry to the processor, the two memories, and this part right here. And it's a complete microcomputer. This is exactly what an UNO is inside. Instead, a UNO doesn't have to have a battery to keep the memory alive. It has flash RAM, which automatically stores the memory. Now, I don't want to disturb this pristine state because this LED is glued in here. And taking out these screws will bend this wire. I don't want to break any connections. So I want to show you what's underneath. So I have I have the predecessor before this. It was not microprocessor control. It used all logic circuits. Some gates are missing out of this right here. But that was a clear it had the bus, but this is what it looks like underneath. I had to start up all these wires and under there it's pretty much no different because you have to connect up every pin. So there's a, there's a lot of wiring, see. Take take a week to build it. 
but this was just a it had no processor it only understood three instructions you know to read write and and to run get the data from the from the RAM that was it so I then discovered that hey I could use a microprocessor and I could program this to do things so actually I was programming this like to do some math on some data that was stored in the RAM and things like that so exactly how this works is this here can send a 16-bit uh, address in two bytes two 8-bit bytes and that goes on to this port it's got a port A and a port B port B controls these counters down here so it would send the two 8-bits into first bit would go here there's a nibble and a nibble and then these took the next nibble and a nibble so this is the 8 bits and this is 8 bits these are the address counters for the RAM right here so this would load this up with two bytes it would go onto these inputs and then it would select the RAM to go to the exact memory location and then that would go to port B where this thing can now grab the data when it gets the data all these things gotta do is sequentially count from there so every time it gets the data these click one so it just clicks and gets the data clicks and gets the data and, and that's how it worked so thirty years ago it was a hot item back then because you could store your data instantly and retrieve it instantly and there was only floppy drives and basically what a company did is they just took this type of architecture and they put it inside of one chip with maybe eighty pins on it or more and it just accesses all these functions directly so it's amazing how they how they squeezed that in they squeezed all that because this is equivalent to about a uno because we got 256k right there we got 2k over here and 2k there I think you only get 1k in, in uno but uh, this is pretty much equivalent to that right there and so if we had more of these port chips on there where we could address more sensors or things like that we could effectively have a complete microcontroller but these are pretty much obsolete these chips the coding was like LDA comma mm, uh, OA dollar sign OA in hexadecimal and it's not like it is now I actually prefer like it is now so if you want to know my opinion but I'm from way back in um, you know, common computers, if they didn't fall apart, uh, probably would have went somewhere with this back then. So, uh, I'm Clay Reed, and I build things. Talk to you later.